Tonight, the president insists he is the sole decision maker at the White House as reports of friction inside the administration percolate. So is there some sort of intervention in Iran on the horizon? Let's discuss it all with tonight's special guest, Hawaii Congresswoman and 2020 presidential contender, Democrat Tulsi Gabbard. Nice to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Shannon. Great to be here. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the Wall Street Journal quoting a senior defense official says this, this is a case where credible intelligence drove measured appropriate operations. We know that some lawmakers have been briefed. There's a push for all of you to be briefed next week. Um, are you confident that the administration is taking measures in line with what they actually know? I'm looking forward to getting that briefing. Uh, I can tell you as a soldier, I, I serve in the Army National Guard. I've been serving for over 16 years. I've uh, deployed twice to the Middle East and in Congress have served over six years on both the House Foreign Affairs and the Armed Services Committees. Uh, and I know two things very well. First is the high human cost of war. You know, these wars across the Middle East and Iraq, uh, thousands of my brothers and sisters in uniform lost their lives, many more injured. And I also know the cost on the American people. You know, the trillions of dollars that we've spent since 9-11 alone on waging these wasteful regime change wars, how those wars have undermined our national security and how they have strengthened terrorist groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda. So when we talk about a potential war with Iran, which is looking like we are walking very dangerously down that path, uh, what I think is important for the American people to know is that a war with Iran would make the war in Iraq look like a cakewalk. The, dev the devastation and the cost would be far greater than anything we've ever experienced before. So the president said today when he was asked point blank, are we heading to war with Iran? He says, I hope not. Yeah. Secretary Pompeo has said that's absolutely the opposite of what we want. Um, and so there's a lot of talk about the fact that the president has been telling his aides, I don't want this to escalate. This is absolutely not something we want to yeah. get into. You know, during the campaign, he talked all the time about getting us out of places. He right. does not want to be somebody who gets into foreign incursions that we don't need to. But today, this is what Senator says on the Senate floor, he described the situation as serious and potentially imminent threat to U.S. forces and said the Trump administration is right to reposition military assets and be in a position to retaliate should Iran lash out at U.S. interests in Iraq or the Middle East. So knowing that the president was so dead set against these kinds of things, does it convince you now that he's seen something significant to change his mind? Uh, well, I think I would I would look at two things. First of all, as a soldier, I understand the need for us to be prepared, uh, and I understand the need for us to keep the American people safe, to put our national security at the forefront. Uh, what's concerning to me is that while Trump and others in his, in his administration are saying that they don't want to go to war with Iran, uh, I hear them saying that more now that they're getting a lot of pushback from our allies, uh, like those in the UK, uh, when in fact the actions that the administration has been taking are speaking another, telling us another story, that it's actually pushing us closer and closer to the prospect of a war with Iran. This is what I'm very concerned about, because I know that that cost on our troops, on the American people, on civilians across the Middle East and the region, creating more refugees, uh, creating more instability in Europe, I mean, the cost would be very great. Uh, they have not presented that evidence to Congress yet. So, and you'll uh, get a briefing next week. We look forward to getting that information okay. and considering it very carefully. We have some brand new polls today. You're running for the presidency. Um, Fox News poll has you in 11th place now at 1%. Um, and I think it's interesting. 11th out of how many? <laughs> yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, listen, yeah. there's a field of like 23, 24 people now. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's interesting that so many of the men who are doing well are talking about, I'm going to add a woman. This is something I'll do to my ticket. Yeah. I thought it was very clever that Senator Kamala Harris responded this way about talk that she would be added to someone else's ticket, like maybe the former vice president. Sure. I think that Joe Biden would be a great running mate. <laughs> As vice president, he's proven that he knows how to do the job. What do you make of this talk that a woman somehow needs to be added to the ticket? Uh, look, I think it's kind of offensive to women that that this is as far as we look as just to our gender, rather than saying who, who, who is the best qualified person to serve as commander in chief, to serve as president, uh, and who is the best qualified person to, to serve as your partner and as your running mate. That's, that's the kind of discussion, honestly, that, that I would like to see rather than sticking with the superficial. Chromosomes. Chromosomes, At this point. Exactly. Okay, how do you get beyond 1%? Let me just 
first of all, let me point to, and how we get beyond 1% mm -hmm. is really focusing on those qualifications. And that's my message that I'm bringing to the American people across the country, is why I'm qualified to serve them as commander in chief. Looking at the experiences that I've had of, of serving as a soldier for over 16 years, of having that experience being deployed twice to the Middle East, of understanding the importance of our national security, while also understanding firsthand the high cost of war on our troops and on the American people, and bringing that experience and judgment to the forefront where I can walk in on day one and be ready and prepared to do that job of president and commander in chief. Yeah. And I think a lot of folks wish that no matter your political, where you are on the spectrum, they want more veterans having more of a voice in our government. So thank you for your service uh, on multiple fronts, uh, candidate and congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Thanks for coming in. Aloha.